guys so today we're going to share with you guys some kitchen planning tips so some of these are what we apply during our renovation and some are lesson learned um, things that we could have done better so for the first tip it will be to customize the height and the depth of your cabinet so the standard height for low cabinet will be 860 mm yeah but because of that my husband and i are pretty tall so we actually got it customized uh, at 940 Countertop uh, should eventually be a uh, comfortable working level for you uh, when you do your preparation work or the cooking itself. But do take note that you know at the same time as you increase the height of your lower cabinet, it will also increase the height of your top cabinet because there is like a minimum space that is required uh, between these two. So the height of our top cabinet is also higher than usual, which is good for us. So you know when we open this, uh, we actually don't hit our head. For the depth of the lower cabinet, uh, the standard is usually 60 cm, uh, which is definitely good, you know, for you to have your cooker here and your sink, etc. But what you can actually customize will be the other side when you do your preparation work, uh, because it really depends on your working space. Uh, obviously, you don't want this to be too narrow. So for our case, right, uh, we actually managed to get it uh, 60 cm here as well. So both sides are 60 cm. But coming to our dry kitchen, which is also like our pantry area, we actually did the cabinet uh, a bit more narrow, so it's only 40 cm instead. So this is to make sure that we still have the ample walking space here. So for this part, as you can see, we don't really do much of like the cooking or anything. It's really to put like uh, our usual stuff and the coffee machine. So 40 cm is sufficient. And really, it's very important to make sure that you have the walking space here. So I think our, our first tip will definitely is to customize uh, your height and the depth of your cabinets, you know, to actually cater to um, your living space and also your lifestyle. All right, coming to the second tip, we'll definitely be planning how you want to store your items. So first of all, you need to understand uh, what are the items that you have or will be having. Uh, would it be big items and do you prefer to actually put them on the countertop? all to store them so for our case uh, we actually store all our like cooking equipment um in our, in our cabinets so for example if you have huge items like this then you need to make sure that uh you have the enough the space for it like the height for it and you also like to plan for some drawers to put like your calories and your base your plates and bowls and then over at this side um we also got our id to actually have this uh, spice rack yeah, so this might be something that you want to consider um, on how you want to store all these items in your kitchen. So after you have decided, you know, how you want to store your items and where to put them into the different cabinets, um, next up is for you to actually also decide on how you actually want to open them. So this really depends on like your floor when you actually prepare your work and do your cooking. So for example, like this cabinet. So for the first drawing that our ID gave us, um, initially he actually put the hinge here. It means that actually I open the drawer by this side. But after that, we actually feel that it's more convenient if we, I will be cooking here, we actually open the drawer from this side. So we actually got the ID to do the switch and for this cabinet to be open from here as well. Coming to the fourth tip, this is our cutlery drawer. So um, we actually got these holders from here. And of course, we did the drawer before we got them. So what happened is that uh, in IKEA, right, there is those like um, preset like holders. Uh, but we couldn't get those because um, it would be too big for our drawer. So in the end, we have to got them in separate pieces like this. So as you can see that there will be gaps because um, it's individual pieces that we try to fit together. Um, and then there will be awkward area like that. So in the end, we have to get this uh, mini container to fit it in. Yeah, we are cool with this, but you no. Know, if you are like super like um, anal and super strict about having them perfect, um, then I would suggest that maybe you want to look for the container first, the holder, and then maybe get your ID and contractor to customize it properly because um, you will probably have to end up with all these gaps. So next up, um, I want to share about the curve corner here. So we have two curve corners, so one right here, and another one at the end so this is actually um, newly added in so initially when we did the planning with the id uh, we didn't have the curved corner but after that uh, we look at the whole layout and feel that i think it'll be nicer to be curved here and i think safer because this is ultimately uh, like a walking corner 
Yeah, but what we actually feel that we could have worked better on is that uh, we should have made good use of the space inside because right now it is um, not a storage space it's literally a curved corner so we couldn't assess like uh, the, this curve here at all so the same goes to this side uh, whereby it couldn't be assessed so um, actually it's kind of like a wasted area which could have been used for storage so uh, one of our tips would be to actually to leave some buffer space um, for your fridge area so some of you guys understand that you actually build like your carpentry maybe right here you know so that it, it fits super well um I, I believe that it will definitely look nicer that way and you are saving more space in terms of maximizing your countertop but for example if you want to change your fridge in the future uh, it will be very hard for you to you know, consider something of another size and the buffer space will also allow to have a better ventilation uh, because I'm sure you all know that the fridge will emit heat so it's always good you know, to have the space to allow like good airflow not just around but also behind the fridge Alright, so the next tip is to actually have leave some buffer space for the opening of your fridge door so what happened is that for example if I were to flush this uh, fridge against the wall right if I were to open the door um, I will not be able to actually open it more than 90 degrees because I mean the wall would be right here for example So if you were to get a fridge you know with like a hinge that allows you to open more than 90 degrees Then definitely you know you have to make sure that you have the space for it Yeah, so for our case uh, we could not actually flush this against the wall So we actually have a tall cabinet right here Alright, so coming up next, which I feel is the most important tip, is to make cleaning as easy as possible. Yeah, because you know in the kitchen, it's already hard work for you to do the prepping, you know, like the cooking itself. So you want to make sure that after you cook up a meal, right, it's super easy to just like clean things up. I'm sure there's a lot of ways to make cleaning easy. So the first one that we do is actually we got the induction cooker. So this is super easy to clean as compared, you know, to the traditional ones. So I mean, but it depends on your lifestyle as well. So for us, we go for this and after cooking, we just have to wipe it down with a cloth. And if they are like stubborn stain, we just have to use the magic clean to do the magic. <laughs> yeah. And for the backsplash itself, uh, we got the glass backsplash. So uh, it's a smooth surface. So it's super easy to clean as well. We just have to wipe it down. So, um, Practically, there is no dirt or dust that will accumulate here or even oil because we just wipe it off And coming to the sink area, we actually chose uh, the do it under mount So um, it definitely is easier for cleaning as well because if there's anything on the tabletop We just have to swipe it down uh, without having like a curb here And then for the sink itself, uh, these are like round edges So it's very easy to clean if there is any like uh, food or anything that is stuck to the corner so for our countertop, uh, we choose the quartz material. So quartz are known for like easy to clean as well, like being stained, scratched, and like heat resistant. So usually we'll keep our countertop um, like clean. So after using like the equipment and all this, we will keep them. So it will look very neat um, on like a day-to-day -day basis. So next up is to consider the PowerPoint socket, um, I mean the position as well as the number of it. So we have two here, uh, one of it is for our this little fan because it's slightly a bit hot in our kitchen. So this one we don't really have to uh, plug in and plug out so it's kind of like a permanent arrangement. Then we have one more here for our Ninja Foodie. But you know if you're using multiple appliances like your rice cooker, your air fryer, air fryer, then you will have to cater like maybe two of it so they can use them concurrently. And same goes for here. So we have two plugs here. So this is for our water dispenser. So same thing, you know, it's uh, kind of like a permanent arrangement. But we have one more spare one. So in case if you need to use like a uh, maybe a hand blender here or anything so I mean it's always good to cater for a spare one and we also added another PowerPoint here so this one is the additional one that we actually got the ID to add on here so initially we didn't have this so this is actually for our coffee machine here and lastly is to plan for the lighting in your kitchen so for us to keep it very simple we have this uh, ambient light so it's like general light to lit up the entire kitchen so it's just a track light uh, so we actually position the different, uh, what do you call it, the spotlight into different directions. So some of it is facing here, some of them is just right down the corridor. 
So this ambient light is definitely useful for us to lit up the entire area. So we will usually on it, you know, where we need to get things from the kitchen. Uh, but definitely we will recommend you to actually combine it with task light. So we have this under cabinet um, LED light strip here. So it runs across our sink to our cooking area. So this gives you the good lighting on your countertop to do your prep work. So especially at night, um, just by ordering this ambience light itself um, don't really give you the enough of the focus on wherever you're doing on the countertop so definitely recommend you to at least combine with like a task light 